Kid Milifaucha, a hundred thousand welcomes from Cork City. Today we're going to explore the historic area of Cork City, the city of 200 plus thousand people, one of the larger cities of Ireland. And we're going to see the buildings that really were around when this city was a powerful force in the distribution of dairy products to its neighbors in Britain and also in Europe. I'm Ariel, this is Urbanist. Let me know where you're watching from and let's explore historic Cork. Here's an old church, St. Patrick's Catholic Church. St. Patrick, of course, patron saint of Ireland. Hello, Vic. Hello, Donald. Hello, everyone. Nice to see you here. Maybe that truck has some butter inside. Hey, Stephanie, watching me from Pennsylvania. Susie says, third time's a charm. Yeah, I have no idea why the service was weird. For some reason, it was going on and off a lot um, in that area around the train station. Have no idea why. Sometimes with internet, it's a bit frustrating because it's tough to understand all the machinations of how internet service actually works. So nonetheless, we're back. It seems like it's stable. Let's explore. I can't wait until Elon Musk launches Earthlink <laughs> to make my life as a live streamer much easier. It'll be such a relief. Let's cross over here. Hey, Ava says, wow, I caught you. Is this a blue sky I see? Yes, it is. Sunny blue skies here in sunny Ireland. Hi, Phil from Cornwall. Okay, everyone, today's a very momentous day for a mega urbanist one of the biggest contributors to this show, one of the bigger sponsors. Her name is Laureen, and today is her birthday. So I'm not sure if Laureen's gonna get this notification because I just had to restart already two times, and this is the third time. So slam that like button right now so Laureen could get that, this notification. Somehow she can find out that this live video is popping up because sometimes when these live videos have technical issues and I uh, restart it a few times, YouTube thinks I'm spamming and this doesn't show it to many people, unless uh, the few hardcore people who are tuning in. But Laureen is turning, it's her birthday today. Huge round of hearts to Laureen. Uh, let me know how to say happy birthday in, in Hawaiian. I would love to know. Uh, thank you so much, Laureen, for tuning in and hope you have an amazing day filled with amazing cake. And wonderful treats. <laughs> Maybe I'll have a cake uh, if we pop by a cool bakery or something in honor of you as well. Or at least a pint or something along those lines. So happy birthday, Laureen. Hope you're doing well. Let's explore historical cork. So here, this area right here, you see all these new buildings. I think this is called Hogan's K, or Key, Hogan's K. And there's a lot of uh, new tech offices, new hotels popping up in that area. It's like the new tech hub. What's the temperature here? It's about like 60 something degrees. It isn't that much. And I wish these churches were open, although many of them were closed.
the Trinity Presbyterian Church. Kay says I, Kay says I should have a cake with plenty of butter. Kay's Cakes in Kay's Kitchen. <laughs> Did I do? Gwen says mahalo. Hey Susie. Lorraine is spelled L R L O R E N E. Lorraine. Different from Doreen. Hey George, nice to see you here. Oh, look at this. This is a dental clinic <laughs> built in a historical church. <laughs> Who wants to get their teeth checked in a old church? God forbid it's a root canal. Uh, that's a tough one. <laughs> this is the weirdest dental office I've ever seen. Literally, it's a dental office. McCurtain Street Dental Clinic. <laughs> oh, that's so weird. <laughs> Only in Europe, ladies and gentlemen. Only in Europe. Here we have the Leisure Plex. I'm not sure if this was a, a regular theater or it was another type of theater um, because of the name Leisure Plex. But now it's been turned into a bowling alley and there's like an arcade inside as well. Over here, a little piece of New York in Cork. Five points with homemade bagels. Mmm, bagels. Mala, nice to see you here, Mala. Live stream's too early for me, says George. Oh, no. Butter with cake, says uh, Phil. Ooh, butter with cake. Mmm, buttery cake. Butter cake. Where can I find some? Let me know in the comments. Man, you gotta come to Middleton. Maybe, maybe. Stay tuned. Mala sent 1,050 stars. Oh my god, Mala, thank you so much. We reached the star goal, and that's why I'm here in Cork. And that's why you're gonna see at least one more leg of this trip through mid October. So, thank you so much for everyone who's been sending stars and Super Chats as well, and PayPal's. A lot of people have been sending PayPal's, like Carol, like Patricia, um, many others have been sending as well. So thank you so much for sending those PayPal's uh, and contributing to the show. How long are you staying uh, in Ireland for? Uh, through mid-October. Did you fix your phone with butter? Yes, I just slathered some butter on my phone and now we have a silky smooth, creamy broadcast. We're just going to admire the architecture. Not too much history today, despite us going to a historic district. We're just going to enjoy the beauty of architecture. Do Irish towns have the good old half-day closing. Oh, I don't know what you mean by that, um, Phil. Do clarify. Do you mean that they close half of the day for a few hours? I have not noticed that. Maybe with some restaurants, especially the higher-end ones, do seem to close an hour or two during the day. But otherwise, I've seen things pretty, pretty, pretty much open and then close around 7, 8 p.m., 9 p.m. Tracy says... I'm grateful for the tour. How do the different cities compare? Says Victoria. Which would you recommend for a first stop? Go to Dublin. Dublin is the hub. And if you're in Dublin, you could do a lot of day trips to a lot of places. You could do a day trip to Cork. You could do a day trip to Galway. Dublin can be your hub to visit the rest of Ireland. If you have a bigger budget, go to the countryside. Stay in a B&B. I, I have not experienced that personally with the B&Bs, but I have gone to the countryside and it's amazing. And if I were to come back, I would do bed and breakfasts. If you want to stay in another city, I think Galway would probably be the best bet. I spend a day in Galway so far 
I loved it, and uh, there might be another Galway stream. Stay tuned. Hint, hint. Oh, of course, Belfast as well has a lot of great things, um, and then um, the Giant's Causeway and the Game of Thrones and other things like that, so you can really enjoy Belfast. Belfast is a diff really a different leg of the trip, I think, because doing a day trip from Dublin to Belfast would be a bit tricky, unless if you do an organized bus tour. Hey, Jay says, I love the Our Lady of Synth song. It's on my playlist. So, oh, Jay, that's so cool. West of Ireland for scenery, east of Ireland for nightlife. Oh, yeah. Just be prepared for a verbal assault in Belfast. No, Belfast has, was a very nice place. People were very kind and friendly there. Very kind and friendly. Don't let the Peace Walls broadcast turn you off. Killarney is another great Irish destination, yeah. And if you want to experience a smaller city, something very homey, go to Kilkenny. I like the green color, says uh, Christine. Yeah, they are nice. Here we have a theater. Did you visit Barney Stone yet, says uh, Tina. No, I have not. Christine, thank you so much for the stars. Christine on FB, thank you so much. Is this your first time in Ireland? Yes, it is my first time in Ireland. This is the Isaacs Hotel. Well, the cool thing about this hotel is that there's, there's a little secret here. Let's go inside. I hope the service stays. Beautiful bar area. Well, right over here, we have this gorgeous little waterfall. I'm not sure if it's man-made or if it's natural. If anyone knows, do let me know. There's an actual waterfall here. And to me, it looks natural, but I can't tell 100% for sure. It might be natural because there's a water line here. And if you, if, from what I've learned in New York, a lot of the water lines actually fall natural. Technically, still running, they're just uh, in the water system, so it might be an actual water line. Camilla says, That's pretty, yeah, it is. Yeah, a little waterfall here in cork. Someone popped the cork, and the water's flowing. Well, uh, said, Looks, it could be man made, but it looks natural. Yeah, these are real, this is real schist. So, this seems to be the real schist, ladies and gentlemen. And some um, really typical American music is playing, <laughs> which is weird. <laughs> it's good to see it walking through. So pretty, it looks natural. Yeah, yeah, cool little secret here. I like it. Let's continue. You know, everywhere around um, other parts in Europe, I went to Greece and I went to Italy, there was reggaeton everywhere. But what's up with the Irish and Southern American music? What's up with uh, that music from the South? Not South America, but the South of America, of the United States. Why? <laughs> Why is there a lot of country music here in Ireland? <laughs> I find this so weird. I would be more, I would, I, I would, I would have not been surprised by reggaeton. And I actually have barely heard reggaeton this entire journey. This is not the land of reggaeton, unlike Italy and Greece. You 
You should go to Power Court Waterfall. It's huge, especially on the rainy day. Ooh, where's Power Court Waterfall? Do let me know, Helen. Well, bluegrass has Scotch Irish roots, so maybe that's why. Says so Victoria. Yep, I think uh, I think that is a good assertion. A lot of Irish people like country music. Yeah. So so interesting. There was even a movie of an uh, Irish singer-songwriter that makes it big in America uh, making country music. And it, w it was nominated for a few Academy Awards a few years ago. If anyone knows the name of that movie, do let us know. George says, I'm hungry, what's for breakfast? Breakfast has already passed, George. Now it's time for cake and butter. There's a place here called Son of a Bun. Oh damn, Son of a Bun. Flipping Good Burgers is the subtitle. Are you going to Ennis, Blarney Castle? Maybe, stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. Moderators, feel free to respond to anyone asking, are you going here? Are you going there? Are you going that way? Are you going this way? Are you going up there? Are you going through there? Are you going under there? I mean, <laughs> feel free to respond. I'm not really announcing where I'm going next. A. Sill says, Ariel, I know Irish folks that play bluegrass. I've always wondered uh, the connection too. Yeah, yeah, and that, I'm very, very curious. Here's a gastro pub that a few locals have recommended me to check out called Gallagher's. Ooh, they have gourmet coffee. They might have uh, Irish coffee. Oh. Oh, that's interesting. It's very interesting. Wait for everything to pass. Let me see if we can cross the street. Wendy says, try one. Uh, this is a very unique opportunity, ladies and gentlemen. I don't drink too much. Uh, I've never really been a huge fan of Irish coffee because usually you're sacrificing coffee quality uh, for, for a cocktail. Uh, and generally it's made with like cheap whiskey too. So it's not my biggest thing, but this is a unique opportunity where this is a gastro pub and it looks like it's a place that has actual real good coffee or actual coffee, not coffee from uh, Nespresso. And, um, and it's also a pub. So this might be the perfect opportunity for Irish coffee. Stay tuned, give me a few seconds. I might need to mute. So let me know if you want to see Irish coffee. I just got to mute uh, for a little while because they have COVID restrictions and um, they always ask for personal information when you're going in. So let me know, vote, vote now if you want to see an Irish coffee and maybe uh, some type of uh, cake or something like that. Let me know. Who wants me to play cockles and mussels? <laughs> oh, Leanne, thank you so much for the $10 super chat. All right, Leanne sponsoring it.
everyone. Let me see. So, okay, I'm right, inside. So Helen says about time for a Irish coffee. Yeah, I've been wanting to try one so much. Um, one with real coffee, but they have a real espresso machine, and uh, that's why I had to come in. Um, so I'm super excited. Uh, they do. So someone asked me, Phil asked me earlier, do they close during the midday? They actually closed the kitchen during the midday. Uh, they're about to reopen the kitchen very soon, so we might need to wait a little bit longer for for the dessert. Uh, but I already ordered the dessert. I already ordered the coffee. Um, so if you hear in the distance. If you hear in the distance, there's actually real espresso being made. So it's not a Nespresso or kind of those button machines or pre-made instant coffee. Ooh. Ooh. That's how they make Irish coffees in the U.S. Oh, nasty. Uh, this is a gorgeous place. They said that they remodeled because of the pandemic as well. Uh, what dessert did you order? You're going to find out, B. Griffin. Stay tuned. Kabil says, uh, a dessert? Yep. So we're having a dessert and Irish coffee uh, to virtually join Lorraine because she's celebrating her own birthday over there in Hawaii. Um, so we're virtually joining Lorraine for a good birthday cake and special coffee cocktail. So uh, if you have your own cake or your own dessert or your own uh, beer or wine at home, uh, consider joining me and Lorraine. Uh, for a special treat. Can you spot a espresso machine 10 towns away? I, dan I can, Ronald, yes. I heard the machine, I want one. <laughs> this is Wavy, says Camilla. How so, Camilla? How's it Wavy? And Stephanie, nice to see you here. Happy birthday, says to uh, Stephanie to Laureen. Laureen, get a shine and plenty of butter, <laughs> says Wendy. B. Griffiths have you tea. All right, great. That's good enough. Yes, uh, especially a lot of you that are watching during the day. So that's awesome. So welcome, welcome everyone to the live video. Uh, I heard the machine. I want one, says Lorene. That's amazing. Zito says, good morning from Seattle. Thank you so much for tuning in from Seattle. And B. Griffin, yes, indeed, we're back. Did you enjoy the song? The song was uh, Secrets of the Universe from the Urbanist Afterworld album. I like the atmosphere in this pub. Me too. Me too. I'll show you a little bit very soon. Hanging over in Twitch says Susan. Hey Susan, thank you so much uh, for watching on Twitch. Hope you enjoyed the postcard. Susan is part of the Mega Urbanists, so she got a few special postcards. This is named after a musician that grew up on Patrick's Hill around the corner. Oh, cool. That's awesome, Eric. Thank you for letting us know. So it's named after a local musician. Also, music is indeed playing. Um, so thank you to everyone. Round of hearts again to all the patrons, the super urbanists and the mega urbanists, people who contribute to the show and also individual contributions through PayPal or through Super Chats or Stars. Huge round of hearts to everyone who does that because Right now, I'm probably being demonetized, meaning that after this video is done, there's no way I can make money from this video. You'll still see ads. I'm not the one making money from it. It's some other music company, but uh, the supporters keep this going despite music. Jessica says, sorry about my spelling. No worries. Unlike most online commenters, especially on TikTok and some on YouTube, I don't care too much about spelling, pronunciation, <laughs> or, uh, or grammar. It's, it, it's something that I, if someone messes up with those things, I don't care. <laughs> Wendy says, great looking place. Yeah, it is indeed. It is a very good looking place. Bonnie says, I can drive you to Blarney Castle. Oh, thank you so much for volunteering, Blarney. I already got a ride, which is nice, but thank you so much for volunteering, for offering the lift. Have you thought about becoming a villagist along with an the urbanist? They're very beautiful small villages to visit. Well, big cities are the ones easiest to make videos. Smaller cities, villages, 
As you can see with my other villages video here in Ireland, it's a bit short. You know, you can't really do too much. So a li live videos in villages probably would only last an hour maximum, which live video is a bit more conducive when it's longer. And uh, beyond that, it's a bit tough sometimes in these, these uh, areas that are countries in Europe where a lot of the buildings are older and there's bad service. I am very lucky that there's good service inside this building and think this building is from the early 1900s, that's why. But buildings that are older don't have good service, so it's tough in villages to just kind of randomly walk into a restaurant or a cafe or a bakery. Hey, Amy from Anchorage, Alaska. Thank you so much for tuning in. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much. What whiskey do you guys use? We use Rowan Co. whiskey. Oh, what? Oh, okay. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Everyone, this is legit. Yeah, I can tell that this is a legit Irish whiskey. So, wow. They even put like three coffee beans on it. The layer of the cream, we have the coffee. And whiskey, of course, from a local distiller from County Cork. I don't think it's Bushmills. He said that was another distiller. Didn't quite catch the name. Roncos, Roscoe, something like that. No, not Jameson, uh, Jessica. Um, luckily, because you know, I can, I can have an Irish coffee with Jameson anywhere in the US. And um, I'd rather have like a really good one. So this is more of a local, smaller distiller. Let's try this out. Slancha. Thank you. Man, this is amazing. Good. Yeah, really good. Yeah, thank you. Enjoy. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> this is delicious. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Okay, so this is super delicious. You taste the whiskey, but the whiskey is kind of um, not super kind of punchy in a good way because it's combining well with the cream. The cream is super, super creamy, super thick. And it is good coffee, indeed good coffee. Not, not Insta coffee or uh, Nespresso, which by all means, if you enjoyed those two things, it's awesome, but I prefer fresh espresso. Oof. That's so good. All right, let me show you the dessert. This is a very unique looking dessert. I'm so excited. All right, let's go. Look at this. Wow. That's amazing. So this is a peach dessert with some whipped cream, uh, sorbet, and some raspberries with some gratin. Like almost like a deconstructed peach crumble. That's basically what it is. Or pear crumble, I mean. A deconstructed pear crumble. Oh, I'm not sure what happened with Facebook. Uh, for some reason, Facebook crashed. I don't know why. I'm going to continue the live video, but just uh, if any Facebookers could post this video, the YouTube one, on the on the Urbanist of the World page, I'll be so appreciative. All right, let's try this. 
pear crumble. I'm so excited. Laureen says that's cool. Oh, indeed it is. A boiled pear caramelized. Oh, yeah. It just uh, sliced off so easily. And look how thick this cream is. Authentic Irish cream. I'm oh, so excited. All right, Laureen, in honor of you, Slancha. Oh, wow. So the pear almost tastes like a sorbet on its own right. It's super cold, beautifully caramelized. It's super easy to eat. It literally tastes like an ice cream. super easy to eat and pears sometimes can be a little bit hard to eat because they're a little bit rougher oh, look at that wow that's so delicious deadpan oh you're also tuning in from cork that's awesome wow so there's the crunch i'm not sure what type of crunch they're using some type of, some type of um Sugar crystals, very good. And now the ice cream. Oh, that's a good sorbet. Wow. Definitely a berry. It's very kind of um, light, not too sugary, because we already have a bunch of like caramel on top of this with some sugar crystals. So this is perfect, not super sugary. Oh, wow. That's probably more, one of the more unique one of the more unique desserts I've tried here in Ireland, period. This is a really awesome dessert. Not classical whatsoever. So delicious. Uh, Wendy says, yum, it melts your heart. Indeed it does. Mm. I just ate the coffee bean. Oh. Mm. All right, let me show you one more time the dessert because I'm gonna scoop all of this up and then we're gonna continue walking. How does the coffee beans taste? I'll let you know in a bit, Wendy. Wow. Amazing. It was really good, yeah. Really good, thank you. That is delicious. So no, no butter involved. You know, when I first ordered this, I thought it was going to be a classic pear crumble, but I'm, I'm actually glad it's like a deconstructed version of it. So no, no butter is involved. <laughs> um, so the coffee bean, coffee beans can be very acidic. So watch out when you bite into them. Uh, luckily there's some cream here involved. And also this already has cream on it. So 
Yeah, be, be careful when you bite into a coffee bean. But they actually taste really good. I really do like biting into a coffee bean when you combine it with chocolate or, butter or uh, cream or something like that. It tastes really good. So feel free to ask me any questions uh, as I finish this, this dessert and then we'll continue walking around historic Cork City. There's a special that eats coffee beans to make good coffee, says uh, Ronald. Oh, maybe when I go to Southeast Asia, I'll try that special coffee. Susie says, oh darn, uh, I thought the crunchiness was from the dessert. Oh no, I just ate one of the coffee beans that was uh, presently presented on top of the coffee. Camilla says, that's warming you up, but handle the coffee with care. Oh, don't worry, Camilla. I have a strong tolerance. And Matrix says coffee was better 20, 30 years ago. Now it has lost a bit of its intensity. The, one of the reasons that is the case, Matrix, so that's an interesting observation. One of the cases that might be is because older coffee brands, the bigger ones, used to use a little bit of Robusta. So there's two types of coffee beans. There's Arabica and Robusta. Arabica is now what's mostly used and seen as like the better quality coffee. If I say that in quotes, it's because Robusta can be very bad quality uh, and got a very bad reputation. Robusta is what gave the super bitterness. And if you try a Robusta coffee, which is very rare, you have to try it in like Vietnam or in Italy, they make uh, blends which still use Robusta. They add that bitterness quality. That's why Italian coffee has a punch or Vietnamese coffee has a big, big punch. However, in America, Western Europe, other parts of the world, Robusta got a very bad reputation because it was just not handled with good care. It was just a very, uh, it, what they were serving was very bad quality. So it was too bitter, too intense, and uh, gave too much negative consequences with the heart, heartburn and acid reflux and uh, your blood pressure rising. So Robusta went out of style. And most coffees in North America and Western Europe stop serving it. And that's why coffee has always been a little bit less intense. But pure Arabica beans, you get like a little bit more vivid flavors. But they won't be punchy if you don't have that little bit of Robusta like you have in a good Italian espresso. Or in the pure Vietnamese coffees, it's pure Robusta. It's just a slap in the face. <laughs> It's tricky, you don't want to feel at first it hits you and then um, later at the blue. It says Camilla, oh, don't worry Camilla. Mm. You would love Mizzenhead, says Jumanji. So yeah, I, I went to Mizzenhead. I post, posted a short video on the Jumanji on my TikTok, Ariel Vera, and on Facebook, Urban This Live. It's posted, so you can see it in full effect. And then Superbinus and above are getting a full vlog tour of it, posted soon. Did they grow the fruit, any fruit here? I'm not sure, Sil, that's a great question. I think uh, berries are grown here, but I don't think any other fruits. I don't think so. Um, let me know for any Irish viewers out there. Since uh, Stephanie says, I'm so sensitive to coffee, even yogurt makes me jittery. Even coffee yogurt makes you jittery. Oh no, Stephanie. Yeah. Do what's better for your body. Hey, Kay, nice to see you here. This is a good dessert. Someone earlier said, I have a feeling Ariel's a picky eater. I am indeed. I like things fresh. I like them uh, good quality. And I like whole foods. 
I don't like too many processed foods. Unless if it's processed like recent, like a good pie. But yes, I am. Patricia says, Ireland is good for you. You look happy and fit. Thank you so much, Patricia. What's the highest mountains in Ireland? I don't know, but they don't come nowhere near close to, to, um, to Italy <laughs> or Greece. So they're not that tall. I don't think they come near close to the mountains in upstate New York either. Nowhere near close, I think. Catskills are very high. It's a blackberry. Mm. Do the ring of carry. Maybe. Stay tuned, Celtic warrior. Let me know if anyone has any questions. There's some tiny crushed pistachios in here, which are really good. You need to visit the market. English market was closed when I went yesterday. I'm not sure if it opens on the weekdays. Deadpan. Sunshine says, air quality must be fresh here. It certainly does, so Ireland as a whole really never had a major industry. It had agriculture industry, it had dairy, it had butter, it had cream, it had meat, uh, wool, but never had things that would require huge gigantic smokestacks polluting the air or the water, generally at least. There was some shipbuilding up in the north, uh, there were some trading ports, of course, here in Cork, but nothing really that big on the scale of New York, of London, of cities like Milan. And because of that, the air quality is much lighter, it's much uh, fresher. And I think it hasn't been affected in the entire time of the Industrial Revolution. Ireland kind of skipped the Industrial Revolution. Only until recently there is now industry, but that industry is really not pollutant in the context of having giant, giant smokestacks polluting the atmosphere. Uh, it's tech, so it's mostly offices. Of course, that pollutes, but in a different way. Mm. Jumani says, do, did I do Spike Island in Cork? No, I did not manage to do Spike Island. It, the ferry was closed today, only open on the weekends. So it seems to me if you want to visit a small town and have tourism open and shops open and restaurants open, your only bet right now is a Saturday. You're kind of screwed otherwise. But that's okay. The towns are so beautiful to walk around nonetheless. Sill says the Irish were busy making beer. Yeah, that, that was one of the few big industries out there is beer making. I don't think beer making pollutes too much, maybe? I know they burn things, but not too much, at least. That was good. Okay, feel free to ask me a few more questions before I finish this. And we continue walking around for a little bit more. We gotta go to the historic area, which is up the hill. So this will give me strength to go uphill. P says, I want to check Ireland during Christmas time. Yeah, I imagine it must be interesting. And slam that like button right now, everyone. Slam that like button right now. We just lost our Facebookers tuning in. For some reason it crashed, not sure why. And I had to restart three times. So we don't have, a lot of people are just not able to see this because they, it hasn't shown up. They didn't get a notification. So slam that like button right now. Let me know if you're on Team Like. And let me know if you enjoy these food segments.
when he says, I love a good stroll with you, I'm so glad. What kind of whiskey did they use? I'll ask again. I quite didn't catch the name. I'll ask again. But it was a, it's a local distiller. Is there sweetener in the coffee? Good question. I don't think so. Um, are we all finished here? Yes, I'm yes, finished here. Yeah. Everything okay for you? Yeah, very good. good. What, what's the name of the distiller again? So the, uh, that one is actually Irish distillers, I believe. It's I... owned by Diageo. Diageo, so but... I have to be careful of where is it at. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but what's the name of the whiskey? Diageo, it's called Ronco. 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 Or Ronco. And Co. Ah, okay, okay. So it's it's nice. really good. Is you enjoy it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And is, do you sweeten the Irish coffee or no? We put one sachet of sugar in it. Oh, okay, okay. A little bit more so everyone likes it. Oh, of course, you know, yeah. Yeah, it's always important for a little bit of sweetness in there. Oh, the take can be quite good or just mixed with the whiskey. So oh, yeah. Put a little bit of sugar. Makes in. sense, yeah. yeah. I'll have okay, the, the bill, please. Yeah, thank you. So, one dash of sugar and uh, Ronoco, Ronco. If anyone can verify the name, do write it down in the comments. Ronoco. Uh, someone sent a super chat. Hey, Sunshine, thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate you. Funny question, I'm placing a grocery order. Uh, what should I add to my cart uh, that would be an Irish thing to eat? Good question. I would say carrots, the big ones, uh, green peas, potatoes, make some mashed potatoes, maybe get a good steak or some type of lamb shank. And I think you'll be having a fairly Irish meal and then get yourself some butter as well and cook all that with butter. Everything. No salt, just pure butter. Just make a soup, a buttery soup, just a pound of butter and just put the ingredients and make yourself a butter stew. <laughs> I'm joking, don't do that. But, but yeah, yeah. Carrots, green peas, um, string beans, I mean. Um, mashed potatoes or potatoes and uh, lamb shank or some type of beef. I cook with a lot of butter, says uh, B. Griffin. Oh, that's so cool, B. Griffin, that's amazing. Oh, Facebook, Facebook. Uh, They, oh, Facebook took down the stream because of community violations? I'm not sure why. Yeah. Paul, thank you so much for letting us know. I'm not sure why. Are you having an early dinner? I guess so. I guess I already ate. I'm already pretty damn full. Don't forget brown bread and crumble. Okay, yeah. <laughs> those, those require a little bit more cooking, so it uh, requires more, more ingredients. So feel free to leave the ingredients in the comments. Joe says you're not on Facebook. Yeah, some, some Facebook for some reason shut down the stream. Not sure why. Kerry Gold is the best uh, butter in the world. Oh yeah, it is amazing. All right, bear with me. Okay, wonderful. Uh, be a card. A card? Yeah. Okay, so the total was 15. Right there. Row and Co. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So where to next? Where to, well, I'm going to the historic uh, center of uh, Cork, oh, uh, nice. the, up the hill. I know, I know uh, all of it. I haven't yeah. been there, but it's like, you know yourself, if you live in a city, you never do the actual tourist. Thing. Oh, yeah, 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 right. Well, we'll <laughs> get there someday. There's also an actual museum about butter as well, so is that? I, would, I would recommend it, yeah. Is, is it interesting? It is interesting, yeah. yeah. Because I, I never knew that. They, they have a... A thousand-year-old butter that was found in the bog, Lovely. as an artifact there. Yeah. yeah it's kind of it's a bit strange, but it's kind of a cool at the same yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, I actually will need to grab a signature. Yes, go for it. Yeah. Someone's and the receipt as well, please. Right there. 
grab a pen. Go on, take it. Awesome, thank you. Have you found it difficult to travel around with all the COVID restrictions and that? Or is it kind of uh, getting easier now? It's easy to travel around, but yeah. the, the museums and like the tours are closed, yeah. unfortunately. So I went to uh, Cove today and there was no ferries to Spike Island. Was it not? No, no, only, only now on the weekends. It doesn't make yeah. sense, but at the same time, it's probably one of our biggest tourist attractions in Cove. Like, right. It's not open. Right. You know? And it's tricky because on Sundays, a lot of things are closed in the smaller towns, at yeah. least. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you don't, nothing. The only thing that's open in small towns are like convenience stores to maybe 6 o'clock and the bars. That's <laughs> right, that's right, it. precisely. <laughs> but I'm not complaining the because the, the bars are nice and also the, just walking around is nice. Exactly. Yeah. Today, we got all four seasons. This is Irish weather for you today. Oh, yeah. And it's raining next to sunny. Now it's kind of just in between. Right. It could go either right. way. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Have a great day. No worries. So delicious. Gotta yeah, drink some water though before I go. I'm back. Woo! Oh my god, so much sun. <laughs> and these sunglasses after all that drinking. I had to take a commercial break, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed the music. Secrets of the Universe on the Urbanist Afterworld album.
Nice blue sky, yeah. Oh, Christine says that uh, Facebook is experiencing disruptions along with Instagram and WhatsApp. Oh my God. You guys didn't hear any music? Really, you didn't hear any music? I'm playing it right now. I guess it's a issue with the app. So sorry, everyone. Let's see if it works. Sorry about that. I'm so sorry about that. There is a bug on this app. And uh, music, I did play the music, um, but somehow it did not play with my microphone connected, which is always supposed to happen. Uh, so you experience deafening silence uh, <laughs> during that commercial break. Uh, so, so sorry about that. Uh, nonetheless, let's keep walking around. And hello, Dr. Tachi. Nice to see you here. And Morgan, nice to see you here. Welcome. Um, we kept ourselves entertained, says Laureen. <laughs> it's right here in Edinburgh. Oh, yeah. I <laughs> Doesn't surprise me. It's okay. We forgive you, says Colleen. <laughs> we had ASMR. All right, wonderful. Let's continue walking around. Oh, wow, that was a strong coffee. Dermot says, uh, try the English market. I went yesterday, it was closed. Is the English market still running? Or is it closed because of the pandemic? Marianne, Marianne says... Uh, says that you were watching a candle flicker. Tanya says, I hope you're getting enough sleep and taking your vitamins while traveling. I am indeed. I'm getting good sleep. Where should I walk? I gotta go towards that church. So let's, uh, let's go through here. Ariel is now sparked with caffeine. <laughs> Everyone, am I looking tired to all of you? <laughs> I guess so, I guess so. You know, um, maybe I'm not getting the best quality of sleep because you'll, you'll see my video, my lodging on my final day here in Cork. On Wednesday, I'm traveling around, so I won't be able to do a live video on Wednesday on the normal time, so stay tuned. I'll announce an update. But um, the place I'm staying at, uh, I can hear the train pass through various times at night with a very loud horn, uh, which is audible through my window. So maybe I've been uh, waking up and not really noticing through that. Ariel, I thought I let you know that I'm at Disney World at the 50th, uh, as well on the stream with a more uh, wonderful crew like ours. Oh, Morgan, that's so cool that you're doing the live stream. That's awesome that you also do live streams. That's very cool. Uh, Morgan, feel free to send me your your uh, live stream page on a direct message. I would love to check it out. It's closer, Shan uh, Shandon Bells. Yeah, I don't know a lot of things are gonna be closed. <laughs> So I'm not expecting the, the church and the bells to be open, but we'll walk around the neighborhood because it's beautiful. 
Patricia says earplugs. Yeah, you know, earplugs can be very bad uh, for earwax. It can accumulate too much. That's why I don't wear them. Hey, Evelyn, ¿cómo estás? ¿Cómo te han tratado los irlandeses? Evelyn asks, how have the Irish treated you? Eso es una pregunta excelente. So that's an excellent question. Los irlandeses son una de las personas más amables que yo he conocido en mi vida. Inmediatamente. Siempre son amables. Uh, son bien conversadores. So siempre hay buenas conversaciones. Aquí en Irlanda, en la bada, en los restaurantes, eh, conociendo diferentes personas. Y también es fácil a conocer personas en cualquier lugar. So, the Irish people are probably one of the friendliest people I've met, period, in any of my trips. And it's very easy to meet people. People here have a very good sense of humor, excellent sense of humor, and it's easy to strike up a conversation with almost anyone in any scenario, maybe a bar, a restaurant, on the train, um, having some good crack, Irish crack I'm talking about, say C-R-A-I-C, and other things. So yeah, very easy, both in the small towns and in the major cities, both young and old. So, so, ojalá eso te, te es una buena respuesta. Hey Edson, boa tarde. Meu português? No, no português. Solo español. No português. Es cuantito Irlanda. I don't know how to speak Portuguese. I wish I did. I gotta learn soon. All right, we're going the right way, nice. This way, yeah. Ludo says, I'm watching and listening as I clean my aquarium. The Heineken Brewery is up the street. Yeah, I heard the Heineken was brewed here as, a, as opposed to being brewed in a different country like uh, Amsterdam, so yeah. Edson asks, if anyone wants to translate to Portuguese, feel free to do so. Uh, yes, I'm 100% enjoying Ireland, one of the friendliest countries I've ever been to. Very easy to meet people here. Whoa. Oh, this guy's going fast. Thought he was uh, stopping. So, uh, another country I've been to that is very, very friendly is Mexico. But the quality of friendliness here is different. Mexico, the friendliness is more kind of courteous, polite, serviceable, hospitable. Uh, while the friendliness here is more kind of loose, casual, uh, more bigger sense of humor. Yeah. So, that's the interesting thing. Definitely a lot friendlier than, than Italy on the onset, at least. Italy, you know, you, it takes time to have good rapport with people in Italy. But here it's quick, immediate. Similar to Mexico, but of a different quality. Camilla says, do I miss Mexico? I do, I really want to go back. So here we're in Shandon, the historic quarter of of Cork City.
Dermot says on the left. What's on the left, Dermot? Do let me know. I miss Ernesto in Mexico City. We had a connection. Ernesto. Uh, Susie, do remind me who you're referring to. Where was it? Where did I meet Ernesto? What's your favorite dish so far in Ireland? The the lamb shank at Kay's Kitchen and the brown bread. And uh, what I tried two days ago, the slow cooked pork was delicious. Let's go through here. So this is the Firkin Center and it's named it's related to the butter industry. I'll show you the building from this other side. Seems that there's some type of ballet rehearsal or show. Look at so cool this building. Murph says try the shouter. Already did. Check out the broadcast two days ago. And look. Oh, Ernesto the, the, the black squirrel. Yes, Ernesto the black squirrel. I thought you referred to a real, uh, real person. Uh, <laughs> that's awesome, Susie. So, there are museums all around the world that are iconic. The Metropolitan Museum of Art, the Louvre, the Uffizi Gallery. All these museums I featured in some way or another. And the Vatican Museum as well. This museum is joining the ranks of those four museums that I have visited in some shape or form on Urbanist. This museum will butter you up, so to speak. Welcome to the Butter Museum. Cue the music. Super urbanists have access to what's inside this museum. The secrets of great butter. Become a super urbanist and you'll get the full tour. <laughs> Alright, let's walk around. Let's explore this area. <laughs> Dr. Tashi says, and see. <laughs> yeah, cut. It's our churn now, says you know. Yes, it's your churn. <laughs> C H U R N now. Yeah. So this uh, this area reminds me a little bit of Italy because of the tiny little streets. And look, there in the distance, George for margin. George, how dare you? That is blasphemy. Don't say that too loud here in these streets. Susie says, I learned more about butter than you have ever dreamed <laughs> watching that video. I'm so glad, Susie. 
Look at the beautiful rolling hills of the Irish countryside where the butter is made, where the butter is churned, right over there in the distance. From that hill to your plate here in Cork City. Susie says you can cut, cut the crack with a knife in, the, in this video. I'm glad. Is there a margarine museum? No, so do not da dare not speak that word in this country. Don't say the M word. It's a very, very bad word in Ireland. Let's uh, go towards the church right over here. Apparently, you can climb up to the top. But I know many of you, you know, don't like climbing too much, so we're going to stick to the ground today. German says the hotel down on the left is haunted and used to be a hospital. Oh, I will look into that. Thank you so much, Dermot. So what is this? Let's see. Oh, the future yeah, so what did this used to be? Let's see. A lot of cars here. This is a kind of cool building. Seems closed. Oh, cool building. Wow. Yeah, it looks very Roman style. Yeah. We have uh, some. Oh, these are Tuscan columns. No, not Tuscan. These are Ionic. Dr. Tashi says, I love hearing the different accents. Yeah, me too. It is nice. Very interesting. Yesterday I was hanging out with um, a few Irish people having a few pints and each of them had a different accent. So this is St. Anne's part of the Church of Ireland. That means it's Protestant. Oh, this is Exchange Street. Oh, okay. Here we have a... This is Exchange Street because this is a very important building. Oh, so cool. So we're in this area of Ireland right now in Cork. This, if I'm correct, since this is called Exchange Street and this is right by the Butter Museum, this is where the Butter Exchange used to be. That's so cool. Kay, thank you so much for confirming. This is where the Butter Exchange used to be, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I gotta make a TikTok video on this because this is a very crucial part of Irish history right here. If it weren't for this building, who knows where butter would have gone in the course of world history. Maybe the U.S., if it weren't for this building, maybe parts like in the U.S., maybe France, maybe other parts of Germany, would have been an oil-eating society. But no, this building won the battle for butter. The one building to butter them all. In the 1800s, the global price of butter, and this has ran for many decades, was regulated here. This is where the butter prices were standardized. 
almost all around the world. So this is the center of the butter trade of this part of Europe. And the butter here was sent to places like Germany, to England and Scotland, and to America, uh, especially in the early days. But even America, super picky about allowing butter inside the country. But these guys got through the wall of butter in America. So this is a place of history right here, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, it's so cool. Just imagine coming here on an early day in late 1800s, early 1900s, and smelling in the air the smell of mm, silky butter. Mmm. Delicious. The butter exchange, yeah. Oh, wow. So cool. History, I gotta touch this building. I must touch this building. Oh. I feel all the buttery goodness in my soul just being right here. the immense importance right here hmm let's go for some butter shall we let's have a nice good shot of butter where's the, where can i find a good shot of butter here in uh in in cork city let me know let me know any uh corkers out there where is a good place to have some good shots of butter Roland says they should make a movie, The Wolf of Butter Exchange. <laughs> Wendy says my house is a great place to find butter. <laughs> is there a good butter drink? You know, here I have not seen any butter drinks. They do exist. There's butter coffee, but it's not an Irish thing. It's like a Mongolian, not a Mongolian thing. Where's butter coffee from? The French used to make butter coffee, but it wasn't very popular. But butter coffee has become popular in the U.S. There's butter tea made with yak butter in, in Mongolia. And uh, there should be other butter drinks out there. But uh, for any Irish urbanist, let me know if there's any drinks in Ireland made with butter. Oh, this is a cool view. Timothy says, are butter baths a thing? They are, yeah. I think there's some butter-censured uh, um, spa treatments. I'm not sure why the dog is barking. He doesn't like the, <laughs> the camera, so we'll wait until the dog passes. Salty caramel butter popcorn is great, yeah. Stephanie says, sounds like a recipe for acne. Oh no. You better, you butter watch out for that dog. Yeah, yeah. It was a, it's a bit, it's a bit angry. Let's, uh, let's wait until they clear out. Some dogs don't like the gimbal. They got a little bit frightened by it. I'll give them some peace of mind. Kay says a good butter and brown sugar massage. Yeah, indeed, that, that is the thing. Yeah, so the church is now open at this time. But let's check this other church. Timothy says our Sands Club, Sam's Club, which is a chain of big supermarkets in the U.S., uh, says that they have Irish butter on the shelf last week. Yes, Irish butter has been sold in the U.S. for a few decades already. 
It became, I think, very popular in the 1980s. But um, the best bet to find Irish butter is in Whole Foods and other specialty supermarkets. You'll find Kerry Gold specifically. Even in the alleys, there are pubs, yeah. Oh, we got some history here. This housing scheme, let's zoom in. This housing scheme was officially opened by the Lord Mayor of Cork, Councillor Sean Martin, on 23rd of June, 2005, in the presence of Joe Gavin. This was built in 2005? Well, that's weird. And here we have, ooh, look at this. Nano Nagel, don't know how to pronounce that, Nagel, Nagel, set up one of her schools here in this lane. She w would have walked up here every day from a home in Cove Street and became the first home of the North Presentation Sisters who moved here in 1799 and lived in cramped conditions upstairs while running a school downstairs. The grill on the door was a safety measure. The door is now on display at the Nano Nagel Place in Douglas Street. Huh, interesting. She looked like she was good at churning butter. Oh yeah. I mean that purely in a non-sexist way, ladies and gentlemen. Let's check out this church. I found Carrie Gold in Bushwick neighborhood two blocks away from me. Should, should, should I be sponsored by Carrie Gold or the National Butter Authority? Because Ireland literally is run by a National Butter Authority. I, I am not joking. <laughs> almost, I think almost all the butter companies are owned by the government. Uh, should I be sponsored by them? Because it sounds like I've been dri driving a lot of butter sales. And Kerry Gold, I think, are going to have a meeting soon. They'll be like, well, this is weird. We have such a huge uptick in butter sales in New York City and a few other cities around the U.S. Why? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Irish government, hit me up. Sponsor this show. I've been driving butter sales uh, for many people around the U.S. and other parts abroad. Oh, look at that. Beautiful scenery. With the little smoke stack of the chimney. Oh, proper Irish scenery. Peggy says you should. <laughs> I'm going to run out and buy even more butter. <laughs> Butter, get that butter moolah, <laughs> says uh, the log. Butter them up, ask them. Can I join the butter authority, says Mark. <laughs> it has a different name, uh, but yeah, basically they're authority on butter. Let me know what's the official name of that governmental agency. Do remind me. WJ says, I also bought butter uh, in the Netherlands last weekend. Oh, that's so cool. Irish butter in the Netherlands. Ooh, I'm driving up sales also of butter in the Netherlands. I think the biggest market for Irish butter in Europe is Germany, actually. Cool old car. Here's my ride. I'm going to cross the street once. Um... Audrey says, oh, this is a churn on. <laughs> Zeb says it's better that I stop flipping the screen when uh, I go in selfie mode. Um, I've already explained this a few times on live video. That is the nature of filming on live video. Uh, on the phone, phones don't really show you the opposite screen. I can manually override that. 
but it is very disorienting for me because then if I point this way, I see on my screen this way. And while it is, might be disorienting for you on, as the audience, if I as a host am very disoriented, everyone's going to be disoriented. So unfortunately a sacrifice has to be made and I keep it as a default setting and have it mirrored. Yeah, so that's why. Um, I hope iPhones change that because if I'm filming on the camera, that's not an issue. It's not disorienting. You get the proper screen, but hopefully they fix that. Or hopefully, you know, it, I can view it the proper direction, but it flips it for the viewer. Hopefully that happens on phones at some point. So this is the Cathedral of St. Mary and St. Anne, the North Cathedral. And it says, this part of Cork has been the site of Catholic worship since the first quarter of the 18th century. A history reflected in the local street names. The present cathedral was dedicated in 1808 and is the second church on this site. The West Tower, 10 feet higher than that of St. Anne's Church, which is the other tower we saw earlier, uh, was added in 1862. This building has been extensively remodeled since then. An 18th century waterfront is preserved in the south entrance, while the north transept house are a relic of blessed Thaddeus McCarthy. The fine Presbytery priest house opposite of the south entrance was built in 1878. That's cool. So they have an entire walk, and we're here on A. You can walk the entire area. That's, that's really cool. This is, uh, Irish tourism is pretty damn good. They, they make... Well, this is, seems to be made by uh, the city itself, but I've seen a lot of these signs all around the country, and it's so nice that they do respect their history. The Catholics beat the Protestants by 10 feet, says Bieber. Yeah, indeed they did in this case. Indeed they did. But let's not get to that conversation. Hey, and Morgan says... Oh, Morgan, I have no idea what you're referring to. Um, Zap says, oh, it's okay, Ariel, we don't mind. I like your rain jacket, says Peggy. Oh, thank you so much. It shows all my curves. That's the beauty about my rain jacket. It, it accentuates all my curves. Ooh, I found some authentic Irish cuisine. The Golden O'Walk. The Golden O'Walk. Right here. Oh, oh, never mind. It's Chinese. Okay, never mind. Sorry, I thought it was authentic Irish cuisine. Susie says, we're going to have butter on our Brussels sprouts. Yes, Susie. Are you buying authentic Irish butter? For my non-existent sponsors, do let me know. <laughs> I'm going to use this as a case study to be sponsored by a butter company for another trip to Ireland. <laughs> How Howdy says, uh, Chuck Norris doesn't cut butter with a knife. Rather, he cuts a knife with butter. <laughs> That's a good joke. I like that. Maria says, shapely curves due to butter. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Got to maintain my model figure with all that butter. Rolal says, hey, at least you're not sponsored by Squarespace. <laughs> So Ronald is referring to a lot of YouTubers are actually sponsored by Squarespace, which is a company that is a website builder company and website host company. So no, no, yeah, <laughs> I, I've never been sponsored by Squarespace. Some people are buried here. Daniel Kohalan. Kohalan, might be mispronouncing that.
Cornelius Lucy. Michael Murray, Murphy, Michael Murphy. Died in 1996. Who's the Bishop of Cork? Oh, cool. Oh, he has a little saying here. May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all of our hope in you. Ooh, let's check out the views. Hey, Pablo. In UK, the clouds are very low, says Tom. Yeah, what's happening over there in the UK? Are you guys all right? Clouds are low, it's raining, it's thundering, there's earthquakes. What's happening? Thank you, Kelt. It's pronounced Conlin. Conlin. Thank you so much. Conlin. Hey, May, uh, Mail says, what's up, Ariel? Good to see you live around here. My pleasure. Yeah, I'm doing well. How are you doing? How are you doing? Okay, so I think we've seen a lot of the historic area. And Honest Sue says, I gotta go. Thank you so much for tuning in, uh, uh, Nominus. I always appreciate you tuning in. Have a great day. Can we go in? No, Wendy. Unfortunately not. Mmm. Mmm. Smells like butter. I'm not joking. Mmm. that house. Ooh, someone's cooking with a lot of butter. Wow. I am not joking. Right? Seriously, a very strong scent. Oh, wow, it's getting stronger. Oh. Hmm, what is this person making? Hey, can you let me in? Wow. All right. They're inside here. I must resist. I must resist the call of butter. Wow. Yeah, someone, someone's making some type of stew or something like that. Or they just uh, steam vegetables with, slathered with a bunch of butter. It smells like that. Gary says, knock on the door and invite yourself in. <laughs> Like, hey, smell the butter. Can you let me in? Susie says, I have butter in my coffee every day. Yeah, it's actually a really tasty drink. That's awesome, Susie. Or uh, Susan. Zito says, knock, knock. Excuse me, butter? <laughs> Croissants, maybe, maybe I, I could can't tell, but there's definitely a very buttery smell coming from that apartment building. A little also says La Perfume de Beauté. Yes, indeed. You have uncorked the mystery of butter, says Brian. <laughs> All right, is this is this? Like gonna turn? Will I ever be able to cross? One day I'll be able to cross. One day this will change. Oh, there we go. Paul says, I thought 10% in butter was, in coffee was bad. I would say butter in coffee is way better than creamer. It binds better to butter coffee 
the caffeine properties bind better to butter. And instead of getting an hour, two hour coffee high, like you normally would with a black coffee or a coffee with milk or a coffee with creamer, with the butter, you end up getting a six hour coffee high. Six hours, pure caffeine rush, brimming with energy. Okay. Where is everyone? Why is no one walking at Sill? I think because this is a residential area mostly. Uh, the city center probably has a little few more people walking. I have to try butter tomorrow for sure, says uh, Paul. Yeah, yeah. Uh, try butter coffee. It's actually really good. I, I do enjoy it. I've tried it a few times. Um, Try without sugar first, because it might taste a little bit weird with sugar, if you're used to coffee with sugar. It's called keto when you add butter to your coffee. The keto diet people have adopted into them, but it's a drink that's much older than the fad that has recently been going around. Um, as I mentioned, the Mongolians have been doing a butter tea for, for like millennia, uh, since the Mongolian ra raids a thousand years ago or more. Uh, and then butter coffee, Victor Hugo in, in Paris used to hang out with a bunch of his friends who were also very famous literary types. And they would uh, spend the entire night drinking butter, coffee, and cannabis. They would mix it all together. It would be a very strong cocktail. Or it's not a cocktail because it's, it's hot, but it would be a very strong drink. And um, cannabis also binds very close to butter. So you also get a very strong high, similar to an edible. So imagine that, coffee, butter, and cannabis. That's heavy. So Victor Hugo would do that. And is it any coincidence that he wrote a thousand plus page book called Les Miserables? I don't think so. <laughs> Especially with that butter coffee. <laughs> Not a coincidence. Um, so everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. As I mentioned, superurbanists and megaurbanists get access to the full butter museum. Uh, video and other live videos around there. Soon you'll see a live video, uh, bonus video of Mizzenhead. And thank you so much for tuning in to this broadcast. Give one more round of hearts to Laureen for being such an awesome, awesome viewer, mega urbanist, kind contributor, uh, and supporting the show in various ways, and also just being an overall awesome person. Happy birthday to you, Laureen. Everyone, keep being awesome and always keep on exploring. Have a great day, everyone. Stay buttery, my friends. Hey, we got $10 Super Chat. Mar Maria, thank you so much, Maria and Linda from Northern Ireland. Hello to you, Slangofol. Thank you so much for the 10 pound Super Chat. Have a great day, everyone.